right, back to the future of my old style. The thing you saw this morning is something I could do quick. I can handle. I don't need the tech gurus. So I'm kind of adding that in along with some live stuff. So <laughs> I'm not schizophrenic. It's just uh, different tools for different situations. Anyway, we've got the moment here this week. Fans are divided. Where we're at, where we're heading, and it's all across the spectrum, whether it's players, ownership, leadership, whatever you got. But the reality is, football's about that moment of intensity, that reveal, that clutch instance where your skin feels hot and you can feel your heart racing. And that's what we got here. We're going to get the reveal. There's going to be people saying McDaniel is, is the right guy or he's not the right guy. This situation is right. It's not right. We're going to get it all, and that's exciting. This is about fun. It's about intensity, feeling alive for a little bit. And this is a game we should win. This is a game that has everything on the line. We're hurt. We're missing some pieces, but the Jets, they got nothing to play for, and they're hurt, likely even worse. So you're going to get that reveal. This tape is going to tell us, Tons, because we have all this evaluation leading up to this moment. So be excited, whatever side of the fence you are on, because you're going to get your moment of truth, and that's incredible. Now, the likelihood of us beating the Jets and then going to KC and beating the Bills, it's not high, but you never know. Anything can happen, and the beauty is if we can win this game, it keeps that intensity, that excitement alive, and gives us another thrill for another week. And that's that's good. That's good. So whatever happens, we'll do the evaluation and get the fallout. But right now, I'm going to cover the matchups between the Jets and the Dolphins in this ultra-critical game. First, I want to give you guys a shout-out for stopping by here. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you do. I didn't think I would do one season. Now I'm getting done with the second. I don't know if I'm getting a third season here. I don't know if my spots are going to keep me going, but I hope they are. But you guys have made it happen up to this point. I am so grateful. So I want to give you a shout-out. Shout out to Ace Bread, my sponsors, because without you, without them, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special and deductory discount. All right, Flaquito is starting, and that is a strong asset to us. Both tackles are missing. The offensive line is gutted. We really have a major advantage. Now, we got our own issues. It's not to say, oh, this is a sure win or anything. But I'm going to get into the matchups here, starting with our offense versus uh, the Jets' defense. And clearly, you can see, Thompson has struggled. We remember him going against the Jets the first time. He got beat up. He had Tehran for the first quarter or so, and then he lost him. And it got ugly. He's got Little, and he's got Eichenberg. And I got that big red X there, and you know why. Right there is probably the worst pair of a side of an offensive line that you're ever going to see in the history of the game. They're terrible. They're beyond terrible. Beyond terrible, and it's going to be a massive deleterious effect. This could cost us the game. But, but. We have to see what the staff does to protect them, how they do it, how they stand, rise up themselves. Because, you know, they're putting them in a game. They've been banking on them. Greer's banked on them for two years through two regimes. So this is their moment. If they rise up, then it means our leadership is smarter than us. But they're going to have a very tough time with Lawson and Williams, Quinn and Williams on Eichenberg. It's going to be it's going to be Connor and Eichenberg doubling on him all day. And I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. And then you got uh, Myers and Johnson and Bryce Huff popping in there on occasion. This is a very huge advantage. I get the two stars because Quinton Williams is probably one of the best pass rushing overall D tackles in the league. It's going to be a massive, massive difficulty. But for our side, we do have some assets. As bad as that left side is, center and guard are excellent 
when it comes to the run game. Kind of gets a little bit of problems here and there. And I think some of that, as I showed in my last video, is because he's sometimes paired up with guys who are just not capable. I think a better guard next to him would help him rise up. But, you know, if you look, Williams, Hunt, and Shell, those three can run block. Shell and Hunt are very big. We need to run inside zone. We need to let Mostert, who I got the green box around, get his shots and ride him till he dies and let him do his thing. Let him break some tackles and maybe pop them. That's going to be our strength. If we come out and do what McDaniel likes to do is go deep, baby, I think it's going to be a lot of, lot of trouble, a lot of problems for Skyler. That left side, though, if you can run the ball and just be consistent at it, it's not going to allow them to pin their ears back. And maybe a, some play action will help you. We're probably going to keep lots of guys in, but – Gusecki's not going to be a big help. Uh, uh, Hunt the Long's not going to be a big help. Smile will be a little bit of help, but then you're pulling receivers out, and you can see this secondary is elite of elite. The unbelievable matchup. There's so many exciting matchups here. Hill versus uh, Gardner is going to be must-watch TV. It's going to be... For me to do a film study because this kid is unbelievable. Definitely getting rookie defensive rookie of the year. This guy looks like he is going to be a perennial superstar. Now, Hill still got the edge, but Hill's a little shorter. He's a little bit bigger. And that pass rush is going to reduce the time that Hill's going to have. And Skyler has had problems keeping himself together and seeing the routes, seeing the combination of routes, going through his progressions. So it'll be very, very interesting to see. But Hill is always a guy because every once in a while, Gardner lets some guy get behind him and there's a big play or close to it. But Hill's a guy who's extraordinarily dangerous. Now on the other side, you got Reed and Waddle. Waddle's got the advantage. Waddle is almost as fast as Hill and is just as dangerous, just about. You know, but Reed is real good. He's not as fast, but there's ways to handle this. There's ways of mixing and matching covering coverages, showing one thing and then showing something else post-snap to slow down Skyler's reads. You could jam and release. There's so many different things to slow this all down, and it's going to come down to that. Can Skyler get the ball off before the pass rush comes? Can we keep that pass rush honest enough? And it's going to maybe one or two plays could make this game flip on its head and waddle and hill the guys that do it. But what a pair of corners to slow that down. Now, Carter, he's another guy in there. You don't know. They could bring him in, have him jam one guy and drop. They can they do all kind of stuff because they've got three really high-end uh, corners to cover. Sherfield's good, but I just don't see the consistent edge there. It's going to have to come down to a very smart play or a broken play. Now, Whitehead at the top, he's good over the top. Is a high safety. He's good in his, his cover too, but they kind of lack some help over there. So that deep part of the field is a little bit vulnerable because Whitehead can't really cover the whole thing. Waddle and Hill is so quick that when you play a single high, it really could put problems into being able to cover all that field of single. So they're going to do a double. That means one of these other safeties could bite. We've seen that happen. We saw it in the San Francisco game. Where the safety came up, and Hill had that big free touchdown. So that's what's going to come down. Mosley, he's good at coverage. He's really had a bounce back year. It's, and, and really, it's going to take a few big plays and a load of patience. And that's got to start with McDaniel. McDaniel has to run the football, has to have some small ball game. He's got to dial up the right thing, maybe some screens on a blitz or whatever. Jets don't really blitz that much, but you know what I mean. It's going to take smart calls, patient calls to make this a fourth quarter. I don't see us being able to score right away. I mean, I just don't. So we've got to play this back and forth because we have the edge on defense. And Flaquito's in. So let me get to that. So clearly... Flacito is a, is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's seen it all, but he's really on the down end. So I gave him the green and the red. The green is because we rely on blitzing and heavy pressure, and he's seen a lot of that. He's been beat up, gone to the biggest games, and he might be able to dial it in and make us pay. And that's what happens a lot. We get some good pressure, but it's just not good enough to really make the difference because our secondary breaks down. Now, Wilson, his kids are a stud rookie. They, I mean, Gardner and Wilson in the same draft, 
unbelievable draft for these guys, for the Jets. And Crossan is terrible, and he's going to have to deal with more. It's like, eh, but Berrios concerns me. He gets like 8 to 10 a game, but that guy's so fast. He could really hurt somebody. Davis on, on uh, XX can make that pick, but he just looks like he's a shell of himself with those injuries. So it could be, and you know, I gave Kohu a yellow because he's really good in zone, but man, is really, really struggles. Now that mid-clock is where he really struggles with, but I don't know if the Jets with Flaquito and this offensive line of theirs against our pass rush is going to get that plays in, that many times into the mid-clock. We got Chubb, who's coming back, Phillips, Wilkins, Ingram, Seela, Van Ginkle. We've got a stock of guys that we pay for, we banked on, and it's their time. And they've got to do it through some organic pass rush. You got uh, uh, Og, I'm not going to even try to do his name because that's going to be terrible. And then you got Thompson, who's having a real down year. That's a struggling side. Nothing like ours. I mean, Little and Eichenberg is like quantum leaps worse than this. But these are the guys can get taken advantage of. Now, uh, Uzma and Conklin, they're not like our tight ends. They can kind of block, they can kind of catch, they can kind of do everything a little bit. So it might be able to slow it down a little bit, but still, I mean, we paid an arm and a leg for Chubb. It's his time. And we got Phillips and Seela and Ingram, and you're going to be able to mix and match that things, and you're going to be able to play some zones, and you're going to be able to drop seven guys into coverage. And, you know, Roberts, Baker, and Rowe, they, you know, Rowe's down here. Baker kind of rises up a little bit. Uh, uh, um, Roberts is really great at run stop, but he struggles a little bit slow foot in the zone. So there's some spaces in there. You know, some spaces in there that could hurt us. But Holland over the top should limit it. I don't think he's going to have a big day because I don't see them really attacking deep too much. You know, so, and he might come in for a blitz and do what he does. But I think that might even hurt us a little bit because I think Flaquita might be able to pick that up. But it's going to be the right run game. McGovern and Feeney, they can play pretty decently. They've got Johnson, who's a really good running back, real fine for them, and Noah Fine, and Carter, who I like. I expect them to play a patience game, try to let this defense win it. They're used to that game. We're not. It could be a little bit of advantage, again, if McDaniel doesn't play patience. <sighs> Ultimately, I think this game is like a 17-14, 2014 type game. And turnovers, if we're trying to go deep or they're trying to make something happen, fumble here, interception there, big sack, it could turn it around. Big play by Hill, big play by Waddle. This is going to come down to small ball management, lack of penalties. But in the end, we've invested so much and Jets, they're doing a great job. They've got that big anchor of Wilson. But you can kind of get out of it, I think, you know. But we're at a point where we've got to win this. And if we don't, it could get very, very ugly. And I think it probably should. We're going to have key evaluations on who McDaniel is, who the staff is evaluating and putting players in. This offensive line with Eichenberg and Little. We're going to get to see what Skyler is. We're going to get to see what this defense is with Boyer. We're going to get to see what this pass rush can do. We should win. If we don't, it's a big disappointment. But be excited because the reveal is here. We're going to get to look clearly behind that curtain. And I can't wait. I hope I see what I, when I look behind it, I see what I like. But we will see. So here you go, guys. It's an exciting game. Just be excited. You're never sure tomorrow. You're never sure to know a season. You're never sure to know a game. Just enjoy this for what it is. A moan of excitement. Whatever you get, it will tell us a ton and be very intense. Curtis saying, thanks for stopping by, guys. Get ready for the big game. Enjoy. It's, this is what it's about. Hopefully, we come out on the right side of history for change. <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna, we'll see. Anyway, Curtis saying, catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.